You're welcome to another episode of Elevation Nuggets. I believe you had a wonderful weekend. And um, I'm trusting God that even today the Lord will bless you through this teaching in the name of Jesus. Last week I started looking at a topic called disappointment. And um, I defined it then as failure to meet an expectation or hope. Now, today I want to look at examples of people who were disappointed in the Bible and who disappointed them. In fact, I want to look at how God disappointed some men. Yes, you heard me right. How God disappointed some men big time. Now, the first person I want to look at today is the prophet Jonah. You will remember him very well. That expected that God will destroy Nineveh after his preaching. And unfortunately, God did not destroy Nineveh. In fact, we are told that God forgave them. And history told us that Nineveh still existed for another 200 years after that episode. So, why was Jonah disappointed? Because he expected that a country, a people like uh, like the Nineveans, I'll call them that, who did what was unjust in judging and destroying Israel. God's people ought to be destroyed, ought to be judged, ought to be wiped out from the surface of the earth. And God didn't do that. And the Bible told us in Jonah chapter 1, chapter 4, I beg your pardon, verse 1. And the Bible read that, and this thing that God did, the act of forgiving Nineveh, displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry to the point that he told God point blankedly. He said, Lord, it is better for me to die. It is better you take my life from me. Have you been disappointed to the point of you wanting to commit suicide? This was the case with Jonah. He wanted to commit suicide because God of all persons disappointed him. The prophecy he gave didn't come to pass. Now, I, 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 I was watching and listening to various prophets who prophesied about Trump's victory, and Trump did not win. And many of them were coming back to be apologizing. Oh, we, we gave a wrong prophecy. We gave a wrong prophecy. Until Prophet told me came up. I said, the God of Israel does not lie. He said, what he told you, he said he stands by it. So you'll be not asked. If God said something and what we are saying is not coming to pass, what is going on? People out of disappointment began to recant the prophecy they said God gave to them. And so this was like Jonah who had to face the people and explain why his prophecy did not come to pass. Mind you, Jonah was no small time prophet. Jonah was a prophet in the class of Elisha. So if they called Jonah a prophet in the days of Elisha, he was really a prophet. He was well established. But here his prophecy did not come to pass. And so his, his, his PR took a bashing. His, um, his reputation was destroyed. Because God did not bring what he promised to bring to pass. Maybe that may be your case. But let me look at another case in the Bible. You remember John the Baptist? It was this same John the Baptist when Jesus came for baptism that pointed to everybody that behold, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of God. This is the Savior of the world. And hurrah! We should expect deliverance. We should expect all things to work out for us now. But Jesus was doing something else to the point that the Bible recorded in Luke chapter 7 verses 18 and 19. And the disciples of John showed him of these things, especially the things Jesus was doing, which was completely against what John expected of a savior. Not to mind what the Pharisees expected from a savior, because they expected a savior to come in the likes and the garb of John. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, come in the garb of someone like David the king, ride into Jerusalem, bring down the uh, enemies of Israel, establish the, uh, the kingship. And then everybody is everybody's fine again as the days of David. Remember, the disciples too were also disappointed because they expected a king. And they were all jostling. Who will sit on your right? Who will sit on your left? And that was all what was on their mind. But Jesus came with a different agenda. That was not God's program. 
And so John was appointed. And the Bible says in verse 19, And John calling unto him two of the disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying or asking, Are thou he that should come? Or look we for another? When you are disappointed, you start asking the wrong questions. When you are disappointed, you start, especially when you have expected God to do something for you. He has probably gone to town saying, Ah, our Savior is come. Ah, he's going to do many things. Ah, he's going to... And he just didn't even look at their side. He didn't even consider what they were saying. He wasn't even interested in... in you see, that's what many people need to understand. God is not interested in our pet uh, projects. He's not interested in making us look good. God has his own program. And he stands by his program. It is you that must align to his program, not he aligning to you, yours. And so these are part of the lessons that we need to learn from John. And Jesus told him. And Jesus said, said word back. He said, go back and tell John. He said, the blind receive their sight. He said, I'm doing miracles. I'm doing all these things. He said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. I don't know how John took the, the news. But the next time we hear about John, he was bearded. I pray that you will not be bearded like John in Jesus' name. Maybe John was really offended in Jesus. Because... You didn't live up to your expectations. There are people around you that never live up to expectations. Don't, don't become so angry and become so uh, detached that it will end up in you being cut off from them. The other character I want to think about that I want us to look at today is the saints. Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. I want to read it so for us to have a very good um, grasp of what I'm saying. The Bible said these were people who had served Jesus while they were on earth. And the Bible said that when he had opened the fifth seal, that's Jesus, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now these were people who had lived on earth. They had served Jesus. They had served God with all their hearts. They believed, like I also believe, that God is a rewarder of them that did their justice. But the Bible required that they served him and they ended up being bearded. Do you remember those young men in the days of uh, Daniel, the prince of Daniel? That uh, Nebuchadnezzar called and said, If you guys don't bow down, I'm going to kill you. And they said to the king, said, He said that our God is able to deliver us. But I like the caveat they added. Say, Even if he is not able, we still will not bow. Praise God. And it occurred to me that, do you know, there were people who made such a boast. And God did not deliver them. They ended up throwing them into the furnace and they died like chicken. They died like anything you can think about. They died. And that was the kind of people that we are looking at here in the Bible. They, 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 they went into heaven disappointed that they were not delivered. That the things they said that God will do, God did not do it. So they came into heaven disappointed. They came into heaven angry. And the Bible says, and... Uh, Verse 10. And they cry with a loud voice. You won't cry with a loud voice if you are not gravely disappointed. They were really, really angry. They cried with a loud voice. And what did they say? How long, O Lord? Holy and true. We know you are holy and we know you are true. But how long, O Lord? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on us? How long? We lose just sit down, we're watching all these things happen on earth. They killed us, they killed our friends, they killed everybody, and everything we said God will do. You didn't do it. How long, oh Lord, will this thing continue? He said. They all said. You know how they answered him? Here the answer. And white rules were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were. Should be fulfilled. Can you believe that? God is going to let them kill more, more of our brethren. Is he going to let us behead more people? And is and that was okay with you? God said he's in control. Just relax. More people are sick on me. When it is fulfilled, I will make my move. God is looking at everything happening around. I mean, I, I remember a particular testimony that God disappointed me when I said God was going to do something. And God told me. 
that even he does not do it for me, does that mean he's not God? And I was like, that's true. If I was born, God has been God. If I die today, God will still remain God. It doesn't change anything. People have stopped going to church because they prayed and God in quote did not hear that prayer. And their beloved one died. We are told of a grateful um, uh, 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 um, one man like you know, one man in Nigeria, very well known, Taisho Larry, whose twin brother died when he was young. He prayed fervently, prayed and prayed. Yet his brother died. And they now concluded that there is no God. What a foolish decision. People have made foolish decisions because God supported them. I want to encourage you. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are facing. But one thing I know, God has everything in control. He may not come at the time you expect him to come. He may not react the way you expect him to react. But God is still in control. I want to encourage you, stay with God, no matter what you may go through, no matter the disappointment, stay with God and it shall be well with you. Once you come, I come your way next week, stay blessed.